Hello, everybody. Welcome back. As you've seen on the title, we have another seed haul. Guys, I swear, I swear I'm not a seed porter. I promise. <laughs> but I am getting ready for the fall garden. And I wanted to order some seeds. And you know, once you go to a seed website, you get to looking around. It's just like going in a grocery store. You go for one thing and you end up with something else. But stay tuned, guys, as we go through these seeds. It is some really good, unique seeds that I found on Backyard Garden Seeds. All right, I am back. I had to go in the house and get my iPad. That way I can go to the website and I'll be able to give you guys a description of the seeds and why I chose the seeds. Now, the first one that we're going to talk about is why it attracted me to the website. <laughs> this seed is the, I don't even know how to pronounce it. God, y'all, y'all know that's like my thing. I don't know how to pronounce none of this stuff. <laughs> I'm going to try. This is the Costoludo Fiorentino. Hold on. Y'all, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to put it on the screen and I'm going to put a picture of the tomato. But this is a tomato, okay? And guys, when I seen this tomato, there we do have a fellow YouTuber and her name is Princess. Guys, what is the name of Princess's channel, JJ? Let me go and find her channel. I think it's called Gardening with Princess, guys. Look. I swear I'm not going to be all over the place here. I know we starting off a little rough, okay? But let me Google. I think it's called Gardening with Princess. With Princess. Yep, it's called Gardening with Princess. And guys, on the community page, she posted a picture of this tomato. And I was like, wow, that is a beautiful tomato. And I just have to have it. <laughs> So I went on to her seed store and I just went and purchased some seeds, guys. Okay. I, as I told you, I swear I'm not a seed hoarder. Okay. But this Costaluto Ferrientino tomato was beautiful. But it says it is an Italian heirloom tomato, the variety known for its distinctive ribbed and flattened shape. The name Costaluto means ribbed in Italian, while Ferrientino refers to the region of Florence, Italy, where the tomato is said to have originated. Guys, I just picked this because it was just so beautiful. I was like, that is a beautiful tomato and I'm a tomato lover over here. So I had to pick up some of those tomatoes. The next one is the tiny Tim tomato. Let me hit the back button, y'all. Let me hit the back button. My age showing over here. Let's go to tiny Tim and read the description for tiny Tim. This is a dwarf determinate variety and it grows up to 12 inches in height. But the Tiny Tim tomato is a dwarf variety of tomato that produces small cherry sized fruit. It is a popular choice for container gardening as it can be grown in small pots and does not require a lot of space. This variety is known for its sweet flavor and high yield. So I purchased this one because it said it's good for a container gardening and I have a small garden. So I do plan on doing more vertical gardening because I'm actually loving these uh, Dollar Tree planters. They are re working really well in the yard. So eventually I'll get more um, vertical uh, gardening containers and I can plant this tiny Tim tomato in one of those. The next tomato that I have, I just love the name. <laughs> I love the name for this tomato. This is the Trudy Fruity Paprika Tomato. And it says, elevate your cherry tomato assortment with the captivating Trudy Fruity Paprika Tomato variety. These elongated, glossy fruits flaunt a mesmerizing deep red hue and thrive abundantly in clusters on vigorous vines. Guys, who wouldn't get that after you read that description? Okay. The next one I got is the speckled Roman tomato. Okay. And I looked at it. I love the image. She takes some of the most beautiful photos, guys. Like, my goodness. It, guys, if you go to her page, go check out her community page with all of her um, pictures and things. She takes some of the beautiful, most beautiful pictures I've ever seen, guys. She's able to captivate even the bugs she takes a picture of. She uses this method where she takes the, what do you call it, the clothespin, and she grabs the bugs off of the uh, plant. 
I'm like, that's actually a good idea. <laughs> but even those pictures are cute. <laughs> but the next one is the speckled Roman tomato. The speckled Roman tomato is a unique and flavorful heirloom tomato variety that is known for its elongated shape, meaty texture, and rich and sweet taste. It's named for its distinctive appearance, which features a bright red and yellow striped skin with speckled patterns. Guys, isn't that a beautiful tomato? I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because the picture should be on the screen somewhere over here or over there, whichever side I have space for. <laughs> Okay, and the next tomato that we have is the Petite Princess Tomato. It's supposed to be a prolific golf ball sized tomato. All right, and these are great for making sa sauces, slicing, sandwiches, and snoo. Stew. Snoo. So this is like an all around tomato, which is why I picked this one here. Guys, the wind is blowing. It makes my little skirt fly up. I feel like Betty Boop over here. Woo! put it down there so the next one guys let's go to our um green well let's go to the cucumber i think i got one cucumber the cucumber i picked is the salt and pepper cucumber this is a white skin cucumber with mild flavor the salt and pepper cucumber also known as the salt and pepper pickles are a type of cucumber that is prized for its unique appearance and delicious flavor guys the skin on that cucumber attracted me and it said salt and pepper. I was like, I just have to grow this and I have to taste that. So I'm going to be growing that for the fall. So this is one of my fall seeds. So I'm going to put this over here because I'm going to be preparing to start some fall seeds pretty soon. Okay. The next one, let's go down to the flowers, guys. I didn't get too many flower seeds, but let's go to the flowers. Guys, I'm trying to find them. Herbs. Where are you? Flowers. Here we are. All right. So the first one I purchased, guys, I've been wanting to purchase this for so long, but I don't know why I'm just now getting it. But this is the Teddy Bear Sunflower. I'm holding it up as if you can see the seat, the um, as if you can see the picture on the packet. But the Teddy Bear Sunflower is a popular variety of sunflowers known for its short, fluffy and round blooms that resemble teddy bears. The plant typically grows to a height of two to three feet and produces multiple flower heads that are about four to six, um, four to six inches in diameter. Guys, isn't that a beautiful sunflower? I was like, this is so beautiful. I originally seen the teddy bear sunflower on the Okra Lady LLC, but she was sold out. So I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to purchase any, but I'm glad that I found that. That's going in my fall garden. Let's hit the back button. And the next one is the Amara. No, 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 nope, nope, nope. That's not it. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Where my, where's my, where's, I had another flower in here. Did I drop it? Yep, I did. I'm like, wait a minute. I know I had another flower. Okay. So this next one. I've never grown this type before. And a uh, princess told me about this when I did my uh, flower seed haul at the beginning of the year. But this here is the elephant head uh, amaranth. Okay. The elephant head amaranth, also known as the elephant's head velvet flower or prince feather, is an ornamental plant that is native to the tropical regions of Central and South America, but has been naturalized in other parts of the world. It's a tall plant that can grow up to six feet tall and produces distinctive plums of velvety dark red flowers that resemble elephant heads or a flame. The leaves are broad and ovate with a green color that can have a reddish tint. Guys, this was just so beautiful. Look at that. Guys, isn't it beautiful? It's just beautiful. I don't know if I can grow this in the fall, but gosh, the color is just amazing. I have to see if I can grow this in the fall. Let's just put that over there in our fall, um, our little fall pile. And let's go on to the greens, guys. I was so happy about the greens. Mm -mm, good. We all know that we have to get those greens going in the yard. Guys, I'm on the website and 
leafy greens i can't see guys I, I need to enlarge the text on the screen old lady problems old lady problems okay this is the amara ethiopian kale let's go to amara ethiopian kale i just love that name and plus it had ethiopian in it <laughs> the ethiopian kale also known as the ethiopian mustard or abby look now here we go with these words i don't know how to pronounce abby lord jay you know how to pronounce this Abyssinian is Abyssinian. Okay. Okay. I just enlarge. I can enlarge the screen like that. Okay. Or Abyssinian mustard is a leafy green vegetable that is native to Ethiopia. It is a member of the Brassicaceae family, <laughs> which is also includes other popular vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, and kale. Guys, this is a beautiful kale, I must say. And if it's grown in Ethiopia, it got to be able to last out here in this heat in Texas. So I had to put that on my list. The next one is the green wave mustard. Guys, these kids are having a good time. They are riding their four wheelers and their little, what do you call that bike? That's dirt bike. a dirt bike. Ain't no dirt on the street, sir. Okay, this is the Green Wave Mustard. Okay, the Green Wave Mustard, also known as the Green Wave Mizuna, is a leafy green vegetable that is popular in Asian cuisine. It's a type of mustard green that is known for its mild, slightly peppery flavor and tender texture. Oh, that sounds so good. A peppery flavor and it's tender. Oh, gotta, I have to have that, guys. I just got to have it. All right. And the next one that I have, I wanted to get this one because I seen, darn, what is his name? I believe it's Calvin. What is Calvin's channel name? Jay, do you know his channel name? He's the guy that had on the Cowboys gear. We was watching the Get to Know Me Challenge, and he had on the Cowboys jersey. I remember that because I, I typed in something about his Cowboys jersey. Darn, I'm going to put the channel name across the screen. But, guys, he had some... Big red giant mustard greens. And I said, man, I have to get me some greens. His greens look amazing. But this is the Japanese giant red mustard, okay? And it says the Japanese giant red mustard is also known as the Osaka purple. Look at your girl. Was able to name that. <laughs> the Osaka purple. It's a variety of mustard that is commonly used in Asian cuisine. It's the leafy green vegetable that is prized for its spicy flavor and deep purple red color guys this is beautiful isn't that beautiful oh take my breath away that is a beautiful green oh you cannot okay what other greens do i have in here i don't think i purchased any other greens let me just double check yeah i don't have any other greens let's go down to lordy have mercy the breeze feel good, but I don't want to flash nobody. All right. So the next seed that we have up, this is the Chinese pink celery. Chinese pink celery. Guys, I've been wanting to grow some celery for a long time. Well, not just celery. We grow celery, but I wanted some pink and some red celery. And when I seen that pink celery, I was like, let me hurry up and get it before it's sold out. So the Chinese pink celery, also known as the pink plume celery, is a variety of celery that has bright pink stalks. It is said to be a rare heirloom variety that was, pop was a popular staple in Asian cooking. It's not grown commercially, so you likely won't see it in local stores. Chinese pink celery grows to a height of about 24 to 30 inches and has feathery bright green leaves. The stalks are thin, crisp with a pinkish red color that intensifies as they mature. Guys, it is such a beautiful, beautiful celery. I'm just looking at the pictures online. Guys, this is a beautiful celery. I cannot wait to get these seeds in the ground. Oh my goodness. Oh, it just looks so good. Okay, so let's go over to the brassicas. Because guys, it's fall. You got to get ready to get them brassicas in the ground. All right, so the next one that I purchased is the Fiesta broccoli. 
Okay, I'm gonna put that in our fall garden, fall uh, little stack there. Let me zoom in, y'all. So the Fiesta broccoli is a hybrid variety of broccoli that is known for its compact size, yet large, flavorful heads in early maturity, which is why I picked it out. Because guys, y'all know those brassicas will be in your fall garden from the beginning of the fall to the end. So when it said early maturity, I was like, bingo. <laughs> but it is a popular variety among gardeners because, because of its high yield and disease resistance. Uh, Fiesta broccoli has a mild... Don't they know I'm shooting a video? Did you tell them I was shooting a video? No? No, I'm just playing, y'all. <laughs> just so nice. Fiesta broccoli has a mild, slightly sweet flavor and a crisp texture. The heads are large and dense with a deep green color. Oh, I can't wait to get that in the ground, guys. Oh, we gonna have some broccoli. We gonna have some broccoli. All right, so the next one is the purple sprouting broccoli. Guys, when I seen that purple sprouting broccoli, I wanted to get it because I wanted to have some uh, color into the garden because, you know, when everything is just green, it just kind of starts to just be like mono. You know, you come back here, it just looks boring for green eye, for dry eyes. That's how I feel when I walk in the garden and it's just green sometimes. It's no color, no flowers or anything. So I said, well, you know what? The fall time is mainly for those leafy vegetables. So let me just add some color, which is why I was attracted to the purple sprouting broccoli. But the purple sprouting broccoli, let me enlarge, is a variety of broccoli characterized by its long slender stalks and small clustered purple or green florets. It is a cool season vegetable that typically grows during the late winter and early spring months. Purple, purple sprouting broccoli has a thin, tall stalk with small leaves amongst their limbs. Can't wait to get that in the ground, guys. Whew. Cannot wait to get that in the ground. Now, let's find this here. I don't even know what this is under. I'm hoping melons. This next seed, this will be my first time growing it. Um, but what is this? Oh, this, this is a cucumber. Let's try cucumber. Let's try cucumber. Okay. It's under cucumber, guys. Let's enlarge the text. <laughs> okay. So I purchased this because why I hopped on the bandwagon. I see a lot of people growing this out and I just wanted to try it for myself. But this is the Mexican sour gherkin. Okay. The Mexican sour gherkin, also known as mouse melons or sanditas, are small cucumber-like fruit that is native to Mexico and Central America. They are a member of the cucumber family and are similar in appearance to miniature watermelons with a striped green and white skin and crunchy, juicy flavor. Ooh. Can you guys just imagine, just throw this in the bowl, the whole little bitty... Um, cucumber into the bowl with some small little cherry tomatoes and just bam there you go a salad <laughs> but i can't wait to get that grown let's go to this oh i couldn't wait to get these seeds i can't wait to have this in the garden i'm so happy all right come on site my internet's slow y'all my internet's slow not the site my internet all right so the next one is the royal snow pea the royal snow pea also known as the chinese pea paws are a variety of peas that is eaten whole including the whole including the paw the paw the pod they are known for their crisp texture and sweet flavor Royal snow peas are a specific cultivator of snow pea that are known for their high yield and resistance to the disease. Couldn't even get that out this go round. But this is a deep purple snow pea with great flavor. So this is also going to add some color to the garden during the fall. So I can't wait to get that in the ground, guys. I love peas. I like to eat peas. Ugh. A lot of people don't like peas, but I like them. I like them. All right, we're on our last pack of seeds now. We're on the last pack. So let's see, where am I going to find this one? I'm going to find this one under squash. Okay. All righty. So 
So when I seen the picture, I was like, ugh. <laughs> but it's gonna be cute for fall decorations, okay? This is the red warty thing pumpkin. <laughs> Put that over there in our pile. But the red warty thing is a unique and unusual variety of pumpkin known for its striking appearance, which the appearance was striking. I was like, what kind of pumpkin is that? As the name suggests, this pumpkin has a rough warty surface that is bright red in color. <clears throat> it is also known by other names such as Victor or Knucklehead. Guys, I can't wait to get that grown in the garden, guys. We're going to have some pumpkins for the fall and then it'll be cute for decorations and also to go ahead and cook with. But that is all I have for you guys on today. We're going to get these seeds started. Not today. Not today. I'm going to try not to procrastinate. I want to get all of my fall seeds started by the 15th of July. And that's coming up pretty soon, probably like in another week. So I need to get on top of it. So one of these days, not not today. Definitely not today, guys, because I have something else to do. But we're going to get those seeds in the ground. But, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me here on Lasha's Homestead. If you are in search of some seeds, definitely go check out Backyard Garden Seeds. They have a really great, unique selection of garden seeds. Guys, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.